Okay, hello. Welcome to Intro to Philosophy. Um, my name is Grant Yoakum. I'm going to be your instructor for the course. And uh, I thought I'd start off by, um, well, I should quote the course title, Introduction to Philosophy, Phil 101, Section uh, 004, CRN 39. Oh, I didn't, that's not the full CRN there. I'll look that up. You're in the course, you found it. And it's an online course, Oakland University, College of Arts and Sciences, Department of Philosophy, Summer 2014. Um, so I'm Grant. I'm going to be your instructor for uh, the semester. And uh, first thing you should know about me is I'm Canadian. Uh, that's part of the reason I'm doing these courses online uh, is because the border crossing can be um, both strenuous and uh, unpleasant. <laughs> um, also, I've been doing this for a while. I've been uh, teaching online courses for about five years now. Um, you'll see the video content for these courses works a lot like this. Some of the videos are a bit older, some of them are newer. But nonetheless, um, this is my home office. You'll see my cats wander through every now and again. Um, I painted a chalkboard on my wall so that um, you get basically the same thing that I would do in an on-campus course. And I find that's the trick for these online courses, doing what I do in class only in an online format. Um, so. Uh, in this course, we are going to talk about philosophy, and um, this is going to be a historical introduction um, to uh, the history of Western philosophy. Um, I'm going to start you off with the pre-Socratics, go through the ancients, move to some modern political theory, and um, to the two forerunners of existentialism within 140 years of now. And it's as modern as it gets in this course. Um, so this video um, is just to go over the course syllabus and give you an idea of what's expected. If you have any questions about this whatsoever, um, I'm on the road, so I'm not going to, for the first couple of weeks of the course, be able to meet with you on campus, but send me emails and I can meet with you via Skype. Um, I have a conference in Montreal that I'm heading to. Um, but I will have constant uh, internet access, so um, if you need anything, I'm virtually here for you. So, um, it, it, so it, I've been in the education mill for quite some time now. Uh, I did my undergraduate education, two degrees, one in English and the other in philosophy. At the University of Windsor, um, I did a uh, master's in philosophy at Brock University. Uh, about 20 minutes out of Niagara Falls on the Canadian side, and um, I'm currently pursuing a PhD at that same institution in uh, interdisciplinary humanities with the focus on philosophy and political theory. Um, I've been teaching, uh, this makes 10 years, I've been teaching uh, in Michigan, um, a little bit longer all around teaching, but nonetheless, uh, I didn't just fall off the turnip truck. So um, I should be able to help you with these fairly difficult readings, um, and uh, the videos are designed to help quite a bit as well. Um, if I have a number of questions, I'll post additional video content for you and answer them as lickety split quick as we can. Summer courses are great because um, there are only 25 of you. I should be pretty on top of everything. Um, I've already today just gone through and set everything up on Moodle so it appears sort of automatically. Um, but if something's not appearing the way you need it to, um, well, just send me an email and I will correct it as soon as humanly possible. Um, so, textbooks for the course. I'm just going through the, uh, the course syllabus here. There's a bunch of boilerplate with course catalog and description. Uh, gen ed, learning outcomes, uh, cross-cutting capacities, and that sort of thing. This is just official Oakland University course description. Must be on all syllabus stuff. So, um, that is uh, there for your reference. You found the course. I'm sure you've read the course, or, uh, read the course description. Um, uh, the interesting thing about this is that um, we are, um, well, the only really interesting thing about the entire course description here is um, in its uh, learning outcomes. Um, and it's the second to last one to develop students' facility in using logic or reasoning um, to analyze and evaluate philosophical arguments, and then finally the last one as well, to develop students' facility in clear presentation of arguments in writing. 
Um, to that end, we're going to end this course with a writing assignment. Um, and throughout what we're going to do is follow a series of uh, arguments. I'm going to have you uh, engaging with the discussion forum, having arguments about the arguments yourself, um, and uh, there are going to be section quizzes on reading proficiency and making sure you've screened the videos. And like I say, um, all of these books should be at the Oakland University bookstore. Um, there are a bunch of them. Plato's Five Dialogues. We're only reading two of those dialogues. Plato, Phaedrus. We're getting about 50 pages into that book. Um, he presents a series of three arguments um, as examples to make a larger argument in that book. We're just looking at the first three arguments there. Um, it's about love, if you like it. Um, uh, Aristotle, The Nicodemian Ethics, uh, which is a great book. I've got all these books right here. I suppose I can hold them up as we go. Um, uh, Nicodemian Ethics is basically, um, well, it's ethical theory, as the title suggests, uh, but it is aimed at um, making you happy. So it's about happiness. So here's the five dialogues. You'll see my copies are really old. Here's the Phaedrus, um, here's Aristotle, uh, Nicodemian Ethics, uh, held together by packing tape at this point. Um, here's Th Thomas Hobbes, Leviathan, I've got pages falling out and rips, and your version's probably going to have a different cover, but um, it's all the same, Bailiwick. Uh, this is written in Old English, uh, so uh, it will... It, phonetically be accessible to you. Um, if need be, I'll post a series of notes as well on the Leviathan, I've got them. Uh, Soren Kierkegaard, uh, The Essential Kierkegaard. Um, and this is probably the most expensive book that I'm having you buy, and there's only one small section um, that, that you are responsible for. But nonetheless, I've been using this book for quite a long time, uh, so there should be lots of used copies of it out there as well. And then, um, it, what's left of my copy of the Portable Nietzsche. Uh, we're taking a look at um, a good chunk of uh, Twilight of the Idols, or how one philosophizes with a hammer. You've heard that, heard that old adage, whatever doesn't kill me makes me stronger. Well, it's from Maxims and Arrows, um, uh, like School of War. Let me see if I can't just pull it out really quickly here. It's Maxim number eight on your, your page 467. So um, I've tried to make these books as cheap as possible. Um, the Hackett translations are good that way. Um, so you'll find the, the first three books or so will be in and around the $10 range, um, as well as the Penguin editions are nice and cheap as well. So um, I've tried to be conscious of, of your budgets at the same time as um, being able to get primary material. I don't, it, I don't like using an anthology for my courses. It's a personal preference. But um, when you use an anthology, what you get is Joe Schmo, philosopher, it, telling you about these theorists. And it, I don't know if it's me, and I want to know about a theorist, I'm going to read that theorist. And we'll supplement with my videos. And um, uh, there's a person I pull on pretty hard uh, by the name of Rick Roderick, who uh, it, on VHS in the 90s um, recorded a series of videos in which he discusses thematics and problematics and that sort of thing. So we're going to look at about three of his videos in the course as well. And you'll find I get into debates with him as we go as well. So um, those are books. Um, we're handling, you know, over two millennia worth of material there. So all we're doing is kind of spot checking. I've isolated a series of, well, it really uh, six figures that you've got textbooks for. It's about eight or nine in total uh, that we'll be taking a look at. Um, like I say, the first one is video content only uh, for the first little bit of the course, and this is indicated on the syllabus. Um, you are, if not going to, about the first week of the course, you're not going to have a reading assignment. Um, so there is a course description. Um, basically, philosophy is the love of wisdom, and it aims at get, getting you thinking clearly about living a human life, um, and engages with three main fields of philosophy. The next video will get you introduced to philosophy. 
Um, so it, it, thinking better, acting better, living better um, is what philosophy aims at. And uh, what we're looking at are a, a series of systematic attempts to uh, answer those most important questions and frame sort of a worldview and a life plan uh, to most effectively live a human life. So uh, that's what we're doing in the course. Not much, just making you better human beings, that's all. Um, so the grading scheme for this course, and trying something a little different uh, this semester, um, is I'll go over each of the sections in the grading scheme and then pop back to the general policies. Um, so uh, the grading scheme, uh, there are going to be a total of seven section quizzes. These are going to be like one or two sentence responses, um, really, really short answer. Um, I've just designed the first couple of them now. Um, so the section quizzes, uh, I've got this divided into se seven sections. Each of the quizzes for this course will test the section that we are working on all only. So these courses, uh, these quizzes will not be comprehensive. Each uh, quiz will uh, uh, consist of questions totaling to 10 possible points. In some cases, there's six. Some of them are worth two points. In some cases, I think the first one had seven. That sort of thing. Um, uh, do, 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 where am I? Typically, uh, five short answer questions for two each, um, asking you to define a term or make an important distinction uh, related to the ideas that we've studied. That is, um, all of the readings, all of the, vi uh, the video material are all fair game for these quizzes. So these quizzes will be posted to Moodle at the same time as the instruct instructional resources. And you will have a, a minimum of five days to complete each of these quizzes. Uh, the due dates are indicated on the syllabus. And um, like I say, I'm, I'm getting good at automating these courses. So these quizzes will pop up and disappear um, in the sort of quiz time. Um, I don't really accept late assignments, especially in a quick, quick, quick semester like this. If you get behind, uh, that's a problem. I'm trying with an online course also to take into account that uh, you've got some time restrictions. You're probably taking this course because you've got to work or you've got to travel. I have to work. I have to travel. I get it. So um, I'm giving you five-day windows on the quizzes. Um, uh, the longer, uh, the last one I'm giving you longer for, um, and uh, uh, I'm allowing you to kind of plan your time. Uh, so that the quiz uh, gets done in time. Um, it's, I've tried to be really clear. Uh, what I'm going to do is grade these and post model answers for them, and this is my attempt to speed up the grading. In previous semesters, I've had people writing like two or three paragraph, one page kind of responses to six questions um, three times a semester, and uh, it takes a lot of time to answer those questions. And it actually takes me a long time to grade them. So uh, this is trying to streamline things, make everything very clear for you, um, and what have you. So uh, that's the section section quizzes. Um, that's 70% of your uh, total grade. Um, it, this is to test reading and that you're keeping up with the course material. So it, you'll have lots of grades coming back to you really quickly, really often. Um, there's going to be a final writing pro uh, project. Um, basically, I'm going to isolate um, uh, three sort of themes from the course. I'm going to be develop developing these questions as we go through the course. Um, and uh, it, basically, I'm going to be asking you to uh, write a 750 to 1,000 page, or uh, not page, word. That would be awful. Um, uh, 750 to 1,000 words, and it's a reflection paper, right? So these are not research material, uh, not research papers, um, and it'll be due uh, at, as the final exam for the course, along with your last quiz. Like I say, those quizzes will be really quick. Um, so uh, you're going to have a choice of one of three different questions that I'm going to isolate as sort of a theme or a problematic that we're studying throughout the semester. And to ask you, this is basically where um, you tell me what you've taken from the course in plain language, in your own words, presenting arguments, and accounts of the various theorists that we've studied. 
So um, that um, will be um, uh, your final writing project. Um, this course ends August 20th, and I know that's just breakneck speed. It's like right around the corner. So um, that's when the final writing project will be due. That's when the final quiz is due as well. Um, on what page three of the syllabus, I have um, misapplied the dates. I'll correct that. But nonetheless, in the reading schedule, you will see all of the deadlines and due dates. Um, I have to correct your syllabus, I've just noticed. So I'll do that as soon as I get this video up. Um, so uh, those are the quizzes. There's the final writing, uh, uh, writing project. And uh, otherwise, I'm going to be uh, presenting you with a series of discussion topics um, through uh, a Moodle forum. Um, each of the sections that we study, all seven of them, will have a forum topic. And um, I read them all. Uh, the idea with these forums is that this is going to be a big open collaborative work group to help you understand this material as we go through. Um, I used to have this at 10% of your final grade. I've increased it to 15% of your final grade uh, this semester so that um, perhaps you'll pay attention to it. Um, each of the forums will come up as the section uh, that we're studying comes up. And um, I leave these forms open all semester. So they will be closing all of them on August 20th um, at 11.55 p.m., um, so, which is when all of the final due dates for the course are. Um, so uh, you'll have till then. I, I do that partially because then you'll be able to reflect back. Um, because the last figure we study actually engages with some of the first figures that we study. So all of a sudden, you'll have an aha moment, and you might be able to go back and reinvigorate the Socrates discussion at the beginning of the course, because Nietzsche is going to present a critique of Socrates, which is really a critique of Plato, which is the next section. Right? So, um, so uh, that's, that's the educational reason I do that. Um, the other reason I do that um, is you know, to give you control of more of your grade uh, right up till the end of the course so that um, it, there's no point that's too late for you to really put some effort in and uh, pull out a decent mark in this class. So um, it, when I'm grading these, uh, like I say on the evaluation section of your syllabus, I ask myself basically three questions as I assign the grades. One, have you posted at least once for each topic? And note more is better. You're required as a bare minimum to post once in terms of either responding to somebody else's forum post or generating a new discussion under the general general topic yourself, that's that's minimum. You have to do one each. Right? More is better. And if you're just doing the bare minimum, you can expect sort of minimal grades. Right? So, um, so basically, the first thing I ask myself, well, did did you respond to all of the forums? Right? And how many times? Um, how how frequently were you engaging with these forums? Um, two, are the posts substantial? That is, uh, it, do the posts offered sh show engagement with, with the material and, frankly, with the arguments being presented by other students as well? This is supposed to be a dialogue, right? That's the point of this thing. And uh, then three, and so that's the qualitative judgment, right? And then uh, question number three, are the posts timely? Or did the student wait until the last minute to do all of them? Just about every semester, I have students posting everything the day the exam is due. And um, really what that does is it defeats the purpose of the discussion forum. This is an exercise that is going to get you studying all throughout the semester. Right? So you're better to do section by section and remain timely with each and every one of these forums as you're doing with the quizzes, as you're doing with the videos, as you're doing with the readings. Right? Um, so this is for everybody's benefit. It's a collaborative kind of, um, it's a, like I say here, it's a place to work out your ideas in an ongoing discussion with the rest of the class. Um, uh, and the other thing about it, uh, you'll see me on there very rarely. 
um, in terms of uh, creating a post, I create the topic, right? And then I see what you do with each of the topics. This is your resource. Um, but note that I do read every single post, and I usually leave this as your space that I post myself in frequently. Right? So I'm not ignoring you if you don't see me posting on there. I'm just letting that be your resource. That said, um, I've got a content policy, uh, which uh, it basically says keep it on topic and keep it classy. Right? Uh, the discussion board for this course is inten intended and should only be used for a discussion of the course material. Procedural questions and general comments about the course, like when are we getting our grades back or how did everybody do on that exam, it should be directed either to my email or be discussed in person during office hours when I have them or class meetings or in personal correspondence between one another. This is an educational resource. It's not a course blog or anything along those lines. And um, uh, also, in addition to that, um, I've got a zero tolerance policy for any sort of derogatory comments or personal attacks. Each and every one of these theorists are trying to tell you how to live your life. I get it. You should be developing a position with regard to this. It's, philosophy is an incredible sort of systematic theoretical discipline, but at the same time, it can get incredibly personal. We talk about all of those things that you're not supposed to talk about in polite conversation. Religion, it will come up often in this course, right? Um, it, it, value, these things will come up often in the course. Politics, right? And how to best frame a, a, a political state, right? these things will come up often and it's quite natural for you to get a little bowed up over these topics right i get it but keep it directed towards generating an understanding of the material uh, don't insult one another um uh, don't uh, generate derogatory comments um uh, keep it directed towards the material not against one another Right, so keep it classy. That's the idea. Um, and uh, if somebody actually um, engages in this form of derogatory comment or personal attack or uses any of that language we know is, an appro is not appropriate in an academic setting, right, uh, the post will be removed and it will come up with some sort of uh, grade penalty. Right? So the, the, the general idea is that this is an instructional resource and should not be treated like a personal blog or a more general forum. It's not Twitter. It's not. It's not Facebook. It's not the comment section of the, the the Detroit Free Press. God, some of the stuff you read in there. Ooh. Anyhow, um, so uh, those are the things that I'm looking at in terms of assessing you throughout the semester. So we've got seven quizzes, 10 percent of your final grade each, uh, for a total of seventy final writing project, um, basically a reflection on a theme or a topic or a problematic from the course. Uh, you get to choose one of three, so I'm not pigeonholing you with that. Um, uh, so that's due at the end of the course, and discussion uh, board participation. So this should be an interesting, fun, engaging kind of discussion for all of us. I'm hoping. All right. Um, otherwise, you got to read, you got to screen the videos, uh, you got to stay up to date um, with all of the material for the course. Um, the tentative reading schedule is there, so um, uh, week one, um, I think my weeks are also incorrect on this version of the syllabus, um, but nonetheless, we have seven weeks, so week one is hello, course policy, overview, general histor historical introduction to philosophy, um, and that'll be uh, on the next video, and uh, then you're going to have a quiz on the pre-Socratics video and general introduction to philosophy. It's really introductory. We're starting off slow. Um, week two is going to be Socrates. Um, uh, it's Plato's five dialogues, the Apology and the Credo. Those are two dialogues from in there um, that you're reading in week two. Uh, they're short. 
right? You should be able to, and they're dialogues, they're written like conversations, right? So um, they should be fairly quick and easy reading, right? So uh, at week two, you'll have um, another one of your section quizzes. Um, I've tried to have these section quizzes due on Saturdays, but I've noticed that the first weekend is um, your long weekend. So at my long weekend is actually this weekend. So nonetheless, um, so it's I've made the first quiz due on Monday rather than on the Saturday, but it's Saturdays thereafter, right? And so on and so forth, right? So your readings are in there. Um, I've laid out a grading scheme. Take a look at it. It is probably a little different and a little pleasantly different from what you're used to. Um, my, I've supplied you with a letter grade to a percentage point um, conversion chart, uh, which is just what I intuitively do. When I say somebody's at about an A minus, I say 80%. That's just how I do it in my head. So, uh, just so you know, it's here on the syllabus. Um, so, anyhow, um, that, that, that's, that's there for your reference. Uh, just so you don't have uh, surprises. You see 80%, oh no, I'm getting a B. No, that's, a, that's an A minus, you're fine. Right? Um, what I do uh, when I submit the final grade to the office of the registrar, office of the registrar never actually sees a letter grade, they never see a percentage grade. This is all just a, an accounting system for the class. Right? What I do is I take the percentage grade that you've gotten, I translate that into a letter grade, so an A is an A, a B is a B, a C is a C, etc. And then uh, this is on the last page of your syllabus, um, the official uh, letter grade to grade point conversion uh, sheet from the office of the registrar at Oakland University. So if your percentage adds up to a B, right, you get um, a B range grade. It's either 3.3 or 3.4 submitted to the Office of the Registrar. So my grading system, far as your grade point average goes, doesn't make a lick of difference. Now, on to the ugly stuff. Um, it, these are the course policies, and each of these course policies are here uh, because I've had problems in the past. And the first one is um, it, my least favorite to discuss because it has me waving my finger at you and I haven't even met you yet. So you haven't done any of the work. But the first policy on page one to uh, two of your syllabus is uh, the policy on plagiarism. And you'll notice that um, I have a footnote on the syllabus that directs you to um, the Dean of Students, the Student Handbook, it, this is uh, the first hunk of it is just taken from the student handbook, which is the binding document that we're all subject to. This is just what Oakland University requires of you. Plagiarism. Plagiarizing the work of others. Plagiarism is using someone else's work or ideas without giving that person credit. By doing this, a student is, in effect, claiming credit for someone else's thinking. Whether the student has read or heard the information used, the student must document the source of the information. When dealing with written sources, a clear, a clear distinction should be made between quotations, which reproduce the information from the source word for word within quotation marks and paraphrases, which digest the source of information and produce it in the student's own words. Both direct quotations and paraphrases must be documented. Even if the student rephrases, condenses, or selects from another person's work, the ideas are still the other person's, and failure to give credit constitutes misrepresentation of the student's actual work and plagiarism of another idea, uh, uh, another's ideas. Buying a paper or using information from the World Wide Web or Internet it's a little awkward, but nonetheless, uh, without attribution and handing it in as one's own work is plagiarism. I've had students cut and paste from Wikipedia. I'm an editor on Wikipedia, and on occasion, the student has cut and pasted my Wikipedia entry and, in effect, plagiarized me. <laughs> if the source is out there, 
I've seen it, I've looked it over, I'm engaged with these courses, I know what's out there, and if you can find it on the internet, I can find it on the internet. I've read a lot of this stuff, and on top of that, there is a funny way that students write that academics don't, and most of the people providing the content on the internet are academics, right? So, alarm bells go off. I've got a wacky knack for detecting this. I've had 50 some odd cases go through the Dean of Students office. It's a big deal. I had one in a previous year who had contracted with an online service to write their paper for them. I forget the site, cheathouse.com or something along those lines. Well, the people who wrote the paper for them plagiarized the paper. So the student did not write that. It defeats the purpose of taking the course, and it defeats the purpose of getting an education. Right? So this is basically the carnal sin in, in the academic world to plagiarize. So as such, here's my policy, zero tolerance. Zero tolerance on uh, plagiarism for this course. Any student suspected of this form of theft, and it's theft, will be automatically passed on to an academic review board. That's with the Dean of Students office. Uh, they know me well. And actually, what I'm telling you here, that's just my contract. I'm contractually obligated to do that. This is, this is the interesting thing. This is how it works. Right? But when I am contracted to teach a course like this from Oakland University, they consider me an adequate judge of your comprehension to, or of the material. Questions of authorship, on the other hand, have to be made by, uh, determinations with regard to that have to be made by the higher-ups. I don't even get to determine whether or not it is plagiarism. If I suspect it, I have to pass it on, because that's no longer my job to determine if the student wrote what they claim they wrote. Right. So that's, that's an interesting feature um, of existing within a university. It's just I'm contractually obligated to do it. Uh, that said, I, you know, I don't make a charge of plagiarism lightly. Um, I actually do go through and catalog each of the sources and parse what this, it seems to be the student's work. And what I know comes from a source other than the student's own head and whatnot, right? So, I mean, really, you know, if it's plagiarism, I have to pass, pass it on to them. Um, expulsion from the university is among the sanctions that they can it, impose for this. Uh, suspension, more likely, um, it, they sometimes require forms of counseling or all assignments for courses to be submitted early to the Academic Writing Center. Sometimes there are plagiarism courses um, that, that, that the university requires the student to take in terms of that. But regardless of all of that, I have a course policy. If this happens, you fail the course. Right? This is to help you do a little bit of cost-benefit analysis with this. Right? One quiz where you plagiarize something worth 10% could fail you the course. The final assignment worth 15%. If you plagiarize something in there, you don't fail the assignment, you fail the course. Right? So everything else that you've done is wasted. You wasted all of that tuition. And then on top of that, you have to justify yourself and stand in, you know, in judgment by the academic review board at the Dean of Students. It's scary, people cry, it's just, it's not, it's, I don't want to have to do it, you don't want to have to do it. This is why I say I hate this section of the syllabus because you haven't done anything. I don't know you, right? It, 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 like, it, there are semesters I have to go by, I don't, I don't find any cases of plagiarism whatsoever, and we have a lovely time. I'm really hoping that this is one of those semesters, um, and I'm eager to read everything you write and engage in some really interesting discussions of the material. This is, this is why I got into the field. Right? But if this happens, uh, you see my job is to determine what you have taken from the, the, the engagement with this material, and when there's plagiarism, you're decisively not telling me what you've taken from this. You're 
you know, grabbing something else and putting it in the spot of your own work. So I don't, I don't know how he did. Right? So effectively, when somebody plagiarizes, I, I can't do the good stuff that I like to do as part of my job. So um, it, plagiarism, finger wag, finger wag, don't do it. Um, and if that's the case, you won't have any problems. But if I find plagiarism, uh, the book is going to get thrown. It's just the way it is. It's, I'm obligated. I want to keep my job. Uh, this exam policy, um, I'm aware these things have, and this is a very quick semester, um, so it's, uh, I'm going to be really sparse with granting extensions and that sort of thing. Um, but um, in the unfortunate event that you miss an assignment due date due to serious illness or death in the family, you must notify me via telephone uh, or by email, um, by message with the departmental office, and is great. Um, and so if you look up the Department of Philosophy and the contact, and is our um, administrative um, specialist, and uh, she is wonderful. She's right on top of everything. So. Um, that's another way to get a hold of me. Email's best, though, if it's me directly. Um, so either either let me know before uh, the date in question or within 12 hours. Oh, geez, I missed this deadline it, due to something horrible and unexpected that's happened. And I, of all people, know life happens. It happens. Uh, and in a legitimate situation where life has happened, I'm going to be real forthcoming with 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 extensions and getting you through the course. But um, you know, in a seven-week semester, we can't be submitting quiz number one at the end of the semester. Right? And on top of that, with regard to your final grades, um, I get all of your materials on the 20th. On the 22nd, I have to submit my final grades to the office, the registrar. Otherwise, it's a big trouble. Right? So I, we just don't have time for a lot. Right. But nonetheless, that's the policy. The answer is no on an extension unless you contact me, and the answer is no on an extension unless you contact me either before the deadline or within 12 hours of the deadline. So um, that's the deal. Um, email, um, you, you see, there, there are a few of you, and uh, the main way that you've got to communicate with me is by email. And um, it, that means I, I get an awful lot of emails. Um, and it, in addition to teaching part-time for Oakland University, I'm doing a PhD. I run a nonprofit organization. I've got a heavy sort of volunteerism kind of activity schedule. Um, and I manage something like seven different email accounts, uh, all of which are pretty busy. And I also write a blog. So. Um, yeah, so uh, the, the email, I'm going to try and stay right on top of it. Um, but, uh, you know, bear with me uh, if I do get behind because these things happen. Right? Um, so, uh, it also, if I get, you know, if five of you have the same question, sometimes I'll put it on the news forum for Moodle. I'm not ignoring you, I'm just trying to use my time. If five of you have asked me a question, 12 of you have had the question and haven't asked, so that way everybody gets a response. I'm going to try to respond to you as efficiently as possible. Um, and Oakland University has this funny policy, um, activate that OU email account because I'm not supposed to even respond to emails that are not coming from an OU email account. So um, that, that's the address that we will have to go back and forth using, right? Um, so that's, that's that. Um, I've already discussed the discussion boards, um, that sort of thing. Um, so this, this has shown up in your inbox, right? Um, I've sent it through uh, to everybody's email address. I've posted this video also to Moodle. Uh, for everything else, um, you should be checking Moodle weekly because new material will be coming up on, on, on Moodle. Um, so uh, this, this first one is for me to say hi, right? But um, from now on, you'll have to figure out how to log into Moodle and see what all is there. On Moodle, like I say, the course syllabus is there. Um, it, there's also a section saying what your grade means. Basically, this is, this is what, I'm, it, what I mean by A, B, C, D, F kind of thing. So, just so that everything's nice and clear and everybody's expectations are managed. 
um, that's there for your reference as well. And, um, like I say, please contact me. Uh, office hours are a little funny with an online course. I know you've got trouble getting into the U. I've got trouble getting into the U. That's why we're doing online stuff. But um, if you must, need to, uh, must meet with me face-to-face, -face, we can set up a Skype meeting. Um, office hours will be by appointment that way. Right? So um, I look forward to an interesting semester. Uh, I look forward to engaging with this material with you over the summer. Um, I like summer courses because they're smaller, they're more focused, um, they're a lot quicker, and it's like immersion. So um, it, this should be fun for all, and uh, I look forward to hearing from all of you. Take care.